What's up YouTube and welcome to this episode of Tutorial Tuesdays. Today I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes, not really behind the scenes but you know, we're going to go into my computer and I'm going to show you exactly how I went from this image right here to this other image right here. From retouching to color grading to color correction, you know, every single thing I did. I hope I can replicate it but today I will try and see it. So uh, let's jump into Capture One. Okay guys, so um, I want to show you guys how we went from this image, like I said earlier, from here to here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to reset this so you can see exactly how it was shot. Um, this was shot with three lights, basically. The, there's this light behind her that is blasting and creating this halo light effect. There's a second light that is right behind her that's creating this light behind her hand and everything. And then there's a third light hitting her direct. So we're using three bare bulbs, they're all hard lights no modifiers whatsoever so um, this is exactly as it was shot as you can see if I reset here exactly how the image was shot okay so the first thing that I did was that I, I brought down the exposure a bit just to make sure that her skin was um, properly exposed so I think I did this and if you press Y you can see before and after so I think I prefer her skin um, like this as opposed to this okay now um, I didn't really do much in in capture one at first so um, I'll just straighten the image a bit so you can do that by pressing R and just drawing a line on somewhere that should be straight normally and that's straighten it for you um, I'm going to go straight into Photoshop now uh, so we can fill up all of these spaces and do some quick retouching. Alright, so uh, to go to Photoshop, all you need to do is right click and say edit with Adobe Photoshop. And leave all of this as they are and say edit variant. Okay. My Photoshop is taking taking its time okay here we are photo shop now um, as you can see there is the stand here and there's a shadow of the stand here you know there's this space I use a, a relatively small backdrop so I, I want to fill up all these spaces first of all um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press M for my marquee tool and I'm going to make a quick selection like this and then press command T and then hold shift and drag so that fills up the space right the right I can do that for the top as well um, command T again shift and drag that fills up that space now I can't do this for here obviously because it's a lot so we'll come there in a bit uh, so I'm just press command J duplicate my layer and then we'll start working so um, here fixes that. I'm working with the patch tool now by the way um, to fix all these little problems. So the patch tool is it really you know, it has gotten better over time as long as what you're selecting you can really go over it completely. The patch tool does a really good job I'll say about 90% of the time in fixing problems. Um, so now we've got in here and I have to go with my patch tool for some of these but um, as you can see we can see part of the stand underneath her dress and I'm going to go with the good old good old clone stamp at 100% to pass it in, and I'm going to soften the edges of the brush so I'm just going to go over that like so and that fixes that for me um, I'm also going to use the clone stamp to try and fix some of this. Okay, now once I've fixed the edges, I know that now I can go over it completely. I'll go back to my patch tool, just select like so, and fix. Okay fix some of these wrinkles in the backdrop as well this 
this is really long video guys so it's just um bear with me our advice is to just you know grab grab a snack <laughs> so you can come along with me because you know there might be little things in between where i would explain some things and that might be helpful okay now next thing we're going to do is go back to our marquee tool uh, let me just create a new layer Mark it with M and then I want to select this entire area here and I'm going to hold shift and delete now shift and delete brings up this fill um, function and then you just select content aware and say okay so just like the patch tool content aware has become so much better in recent times and voila it does a relatively good job uh, at least it gets me on the way I am not, it, it really messed up there, but you know, we're going to fix that manually. So um, now I want to get rid of these shadows. I would do that with my patch tool. And here we go. Um, we're going to try and put markers on the video so that you can jump to anywhere you want. Uh, we're just going to label this place, you know, clean up and fix in backdrop. Okay, so. Let me undo that. Okay, so um, let me fix all of that. So, yep, that was full stamp in action, and we have gone from here to here. So that's quite an easy fix, and we have fixed most of the background issues. Obviously, there's this part here, but we're going to do a four by five crop. So I just flatten this shift command E. And then I'm going to use my crop tool to do a 4x5 crop. Try and center high bit. And then make sure you check content aware because obviously we've cropped outside of our picture. So just click content aware here and press done. Wait for Photoshop. Yep, my Photoshop does that for us. So I think this concludes the cleanup part. Um, I might want to use my liquify to just bend to the base of this backdrop a bit. So Shift Command X is shortcut for for um, liquify, and I'm just going to use this warp tool. Reduce the pressure to about five, four, and I can bend this to make it straight. Okay. All right. Okay. Now this concludes part one of everything we're doing, and uh, we are going to go into um, frequency separation next. Okay, guys. So we're going to start with six frequency separation now. Um, I have a video about frequency separation, by the way. Um, I'll link that to the video, but I'll explain again. Um, I use this action from FX Ray, so um, advanced frequency separation right here. I am going to use um, around what, let me say, 4 or 4.5 for this image. If you want to understand um, why I chose this number, please watch my other video on frequency separation. Now, first things first, high layer, and we're going to try and remove um, blemishes from the skin with our clone stamp. Okay, so close up 100%. I'm just going to go over the skin really quickly to take out any unwanted element.
Now my trick I do sometimes is I reduce the opacity of my tone stamp brush and make a bigger brush and I just go over areas that might need a little softening. Please be careful with this as it damages texture, you have to use it sparingly. Okay, alright. Um, there's not a lot to be done really on the height layer for this image. Our model has really good skin, so. Right, so now we're going to go to the low layer and we're going to select the mixer brush tool. Mixer brush. And if you want to see my settings all here, wet is 23, load is 19, mix is 30, flow is 22. Um, yeah, it's all there. If you want to really understand more about mixer brush and how to use it in frequency separation, again, I'll refer to my old video. I'm going to link that video in the description below. I'm just going to do a little brushing. Nothing too crazy. Remember, you want to brush, you know, similar areas. You don't want to brush from your mid tones into your highlights too much, or from your shadows into your mid tones too much. You just want to keep everything nice and uniform. Alright, so guys, lastly, we're going to do um, frequency separation on her face with the mixer brush tool. Um, we already um, did the high layer. Maybe there's still a little to be done there. Um, I'm just going to go with my tone stamp. Not really the same image, so we're fine. Um, now we're going to use the mixer brush tool. So if you're ever unsure about where to brush, if you're using this action, you can turn on these three first three layers um, in your check layer, and then that helps you to see exactly where the different tones interact with each other, and it helps you to brush better, right? So I can see, and then I can brush. Also, you have a general idea of how, you know, light falls on the face and how you, you want it to look. So this is not really to change the pattern of the light, just to, you know, notch it to be closer to, to perfection, so it looks nicer. Um, we're not going to do anything too crazy. Just a little work here. Okay. And if I do this, you can see before and after. So let me turn this off. And you can see what we've done. Um, before and after the entire thing. Good, 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 looks good. Um, now, next thing is, I'm going to flatten this. I'm happy with what I've done. Let me see if I can fix just a little bit more of the wrinkling of the neck. Okay. Okay, beautiful. Now we have to change the backdrop. So as you can see in the final image, let me quickly go to capture one. In the final image here, we have this really interesting looking backdrop that adds to the picture. So we're going to try to add that now in Photoshop. Okay, so now to change the backdrop or not really change, what I do most times is to overlay something else on the backdrop. You need to make some kind of selection. Right, and the selection is 
how do you select the backdrop and there are two ways to do this we could go to select and do select subject um, Photoshop has become really good now in selecting subjects so you can see it makes a really really decent selection apart from the hair which is really hard on a normal day and some areas here it makes it does a decent job um, in some instances we can also say um, select and then select and then uh, color range now with color range you can pick this eyedropper tool and pick a certain color and then it selects that color so everything that is white is selected everything that is black is not selected now you can add to that selection by clicking this and then we start to add we start to add now this is in some ways better for the edges of the picture because it wouldn't select the different color it will only select the background color which is really nice so for areas like the hair areas like this flowers and all it's a much better tool for selection and we can do that now fuzziness is how accurate you want this selection to be the lower we bring it the more you know detailed and accurate the selection is okay now i know i'm not selecting this area with the lights and that's intentional so we're going to leave that like that for now and push okay so as you can see this is i don't want to say a mess but <laughs> you can see what it is now the good thing is that we can use our magic tool with w and just you know help to fix some of this areas that are not perfectly selected so holding alt is to subtract from your selection and holding shift is to add so right now i'm just subtracting address in you know, all these darker parts of address that look like the background i'm subtracting them holding alt alt or option option by the way so i keep saying alt you know i've been using apple for quite some time now all right now for this area we would hold shift so we can add all of that background back in i'll subtract now the good thing is that we're going to convert our selection into a mask and because we're doing to convert our selection into a mask it means that even after we've done the selection it's not over we can still tweak it in the mask in the mask now I want to select the entire floor backdrop. I'm just going to hold the marquee tool and hold option. And that's it deselecting and voila. So as you can see we have a pretty decent selection. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, that works. Now the next thing you want to do is hold um, while you have your selection on, click the layer mask icon here. And what that does is it converts your selection into a layer mask and you can see what the mask looks like here. Now, um, now what we need to do is, if you can see the mask, you see that white is for reveal and black is for hide. Now, we need to bring in the picture that we want to overlay on the backdrop. Um, I'm just going to hold option, command and space to open my directory and let's go to download. Downloads, right? Uh, I think I have a folder named Textures. Let me remove this by name. And then you can see Textures. And then I'm just going to go through them. And these are all Textures, by the way, that I downloaded from unsplash.com. That's UN splash.com. They are free to use. You can download this from there. Now, I'm just going to drag this particular one onto my image and press ok now remember we have a mask that says hide everything, hide everything that is black and show everything that is white so we're going to just drag that mask onto this new layer and then voila we have this now the next thing you want to do is select that layer and change your blending mode from normal to overlay The overlay puts in this texture into your background so it looks like it is your background. 
see this is what normal looks like and then this is what overlay looks like so as you can see overlay looks a lot better but obviously we're going to reduce the opacity of this a bit as you can see now the reason i didn't want to select this part was you know obviously there's a light here and i didn't want to cover that light up with my texture now if they, for any reason there are some areas that you feel are not properly selected you can go back to your mask and pick a brush regular brush not mixer brush uh, with some opacity and flow of 100% and then you can either with white start to show the texture or with black start to hide the texture in certain areas right so you guys see that so I'm just going to start to show it in some of these areas just before the light and I'm going to reduce the opacity so it's like it feels like you fade okay so with white I'm just going to show it up a bit so it's hard to tell where it starts and where it ends. Beautiful. So this is what we've done. Just like that. Voila. Okay, we'll flatten. Let me see. And you can go through to see if there are any, you know, really bad inaccuracies that you want to fix. But most of this is fixable with the brush now. Um, You can see in between the flowers how it works. Um, if we are done just select subjects, then it wouldn't have been this accurate. Okay. Alright, so we're going to flatten the layer. Okay guys, so we flattened the layer now and this is what this looks like. I think it looks good, right? Right? Right guys, it looks good. Okay, so um I'm just noticing some issues around this area here. And let me undo. So I'm just going to brush. So remember with X uh, you can swap between a black brush and a white brush with X and the white brush um, shows and the black brush hides. Okay. Um, we're going to flatten the layers and still the shadow here I forgot to get rid of. Okay, so before, after, starting to look good, and um, we're just going to flatten this. So Shift Command E, and then Command S to save. So saving takes it back to Capture One. Let's go to Capture One. This is not it. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, so this is it. So we have successfully gone from this to this. Now that's not the end obviously because this has a different tone to it. So we're going to color grade. All right, so now what you want to do in Capture One is you want to create a new layer. All right, so you create a new layer by using this add button or you can go to your layers tool and then say add. Now once you add a new layer, you can rename the layer, let's call it grade. And then we can right click on grade and say fill mask. Now what this does is that if you press M, you can see that everywhere is red, meaning that whatever effects we do is going to affect the entire image. Okay, so what we need to do now is go to this gray layer right click on it and say apply adjustments from and then you want to apply adjustments from 
built-in styles and then spring now the one I used in this image was spring two or three I'm not sure I think it was two and that's what brought this image here and I pushed my blocks down a bit added some saturation and then I dehazed a little bit if I remember correctly so immediately that brings you from here to here so as you can see that's a huge difference and then I think I added a second layer so another way to do the layer thing is to hold this add button and say new field layer so this way after creating the new layer if you press M you see it's already masked you don't need to fill again now we can right click on this again and say apply adjustments from built-in style spring and I think I mixed it with this one so SPR 07 SPR 07 has a bit of um, cyan and green to the shadows and I like it now I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this one a bit and then that's how we went from here to here so let me change before and after to speed view and you can see exactly how we went from here to here okay guys so that's exactly how we went from raw file to the final picture i hope you learned a thing or two uh, make sure you check out the other videos the one on how to use frequency separation and the other video on how to use styles and presets i think they would help to show you exactly how i did what i did in this picture until next time see you guys